Of all the various bioforms of the Tyranid race, the Gene Stealers are one of the most universally feared. They are intelligent and cunning, sporting a tough external carapace as well as an extremely dense musculature, being blessed with the strength to tear apart even the most reinforced armour with their massive claws. But one of the most feared aspects of the Gene Stealer is in how they reproduce. Gene Stealers reproduce by using an ovipositor type organ concealed within their long tongues to infect a host with the Gene Stealer's own genetic material. Once a creature has become infected, the host becomes little more than a thrall to the Gene Stealer, becoming either driven by the need to sire a hybrid offspring or will simply birth such creatures themselves. The offspring that is spawned is an amalgamation of Gene Stealer and the host species, more closely resembling Gene Stealers with bestial features and multiple arms. Despite its horrific and grotesque appearance, the host parents view the monstrous offspring as being a perfect child in their eyes, completely under the sway of the growing Gene Stealer cult's broodmind. Each generation of hybrids that breed will in turn create more hybrids that look more and more like the host species with every passing generation, until the hybrids reach their fourth generation where they are almost indistinguishable from the host species, save for a heavy bone structure and hypnotic eyes. The majority of Gene Stealer hybrids that have been documented are derived from human genetic material. This is due to not only humans being an extremely common species throughout the galaxy, but also being one that, at a genetic level, serves as a particularly good host for hybridization. But what about hybrids created from other species? The Eldari are generally considered as being poor hosts for the gene stealers to infect, due to the reality that Eldari biology is far more intricate and complex compared to that of humans. There is also the strong implication that Eldari reproduction is performed in a number of stages. According to the book Xenology, male Eldari have reproductive organs that, while outwardly analogous to those of a human male, the gametes delivery appears to be progressive, featuring corresponding organs for successive stages of mating. This would seem to suggest that the male would mate multiple times with the female to provide additional genetic material for their offspring throughout the duration of the embryo's gestation. As such, gene stealer infestation can take far longer to even produce even a single hybridized offspring, and due to the resulting increase in psychic activity caused by the creation of the gene stealer cult's collective brood mind, the Eldari will often quickly discover and swiftly eliminate the hybrid community, destroying it utterly. But if such an infestation isn't discovered or eliminated, then gene stealers can very well take over an entire craft world. This was even demonstrated within the novel Ghost Warrior with the craft world of Zayasuthra. Zaisuthra was one of the very first craft worlds constructed by the Eldari, but was long considered lost, due to having disappeared into warp space. When the craft world re-emerged into the material universe, it would eventually be discovered that the population had long been infested with a gene stealer cult. This process had apparently been going on for so long, that the aging inhabitants were in desperate need of fresh genetic material to add to their population, and so began to emit a psychic beacon to attract other Eldari to them. This infestation ran so deep that even the craft world's avatar of Cain became a monstrous creature known as the Patriarch of Cain. The gene stealers and their hybrid offspring, however, would eventually be slaughtered by the forces of the Inari. The Tau, on the other hand, while biologically suitable hosts for the Gene Stealers, face a different problem entirely, their rigid, caste-based society. 
as the members of each cast have evolved distinctive biological differences, such as the squat and robust bodies of the Earth cast, or the thin, gangly bodies and hollow bones of the Air cast, the spread of gene stealer infestation throughout the different casts would mainly depend upon these casts being either subspecies, as commonly assumed, or if they are in fact fully separate species of Tau. If the separate casts are close enough genetically that either interspecific or intraspecific interbreeding would be biologically possible, which in itself seems to be a strong possibility, then the spread of gene stealer infection would be able to transmit between the casts in order for the rate of infection to spread. However, the resulting offspring may potentially become sterile as a result, leaving them unable to sire any hybrid offspring of their own, unless Tau hybrids retain the gene stealer ovipositor organ, which in that case could allow them to infect others through that particular method. But there have certainly been documented cases of Tau hybridizations occurring, the most notable example of which was when the Tau of the Earth cast captured a single gene stealer from High Fleet Gorgon upon the sept world of Cassimien. The Earth cast, who are the scientists and engineers of Tau society, allowed the gene stealer to infect one of their number with its genetic seed in order to study the effects and progression of gene stealer infestation. Over the course of the next 20 years, the Tau continued to study the evolution of Tau hybrids, until a bloody schism erupted throughout the research facilities, resulting in the Tau needing the military aid of the fire cast to put the rebellion down. The planet would be consumed by war, and the cult would be purged by the warriors of the fire cast before the world was quarantined for an additional 10 years. After this decade had passed, the ethereal known as Aung Gol, who was noted to be a rather unusual and eccentric individual, declares Kasimien free of taint. However, it is implied that Aung Gol himself could very well have been infected, or potentially even a hybrid himself, in a manner similar to the Magus strain of hybrid found within human-derived cults. While humans and Tau would be the desired hosts for a gene stealer to infect, one species that is less so is that of the Orcs. Orcs are considered to be a poor choice for gene stealer infestation for a number of reasons, the first of which is due to the Orc's own reproductive system. Unlike humans, Eldari and Tau, the Orcs do not reproduce through the act of mating. Instead, Orcs are an asexual species that reproduces through the act of shedding fungal spores throughout their lives. These fungal spores will eventually take root and grow larger while the Orc embryo develops, drawing nutrients around it, much like a growing plant. In addition, Orcs shed their spores more frequently when they reach old age or upon their death. Because of this slow shedding of spores, which can create an entire orcoid ecosystem, not only creating new orcs, but also snotlings, Gretchen and squigs, there's no guarantee that an infected orc will shed spores that contain the gene sealer DNA necessary to facilitate the growth of a hybridized orc. This unpredictable reproductive process also makes it very time consuming to create a hybrid brood for any gene stealer patriarch who had little choice but to infect an orc. The second problem for a hybrid brood created from orc stock is the fact that orcs can instinctively sense corruption and mutation, defined by anyone being seen as unorky by the rest of the tribe or warband. Because of this, any orcs who might have been infected are typically beaten to death in short order. As a result, gene stealer broods within orc society will usually occur either among feral orc societies or within bands of orc freebooters, due to their nomadic and otherwise unorky lifestyle, are not only less likely to arouse suspicion from other orcs, but are also more likely 
to encounter gene stealers in the first place, such as during their exploration of space hulks in their eternal quest for loot. Because of all these factors, a patriarch may use orcs as a stopgap before moving on to more appropriate hosts such as humans. It's also worth noting that orc hybrids seemingly have a unique trait when compared to other hybrid species. With the exception of fourth generation hybrids, gene stealer orc hybrids still retain the overpositors that pure strain specimens use to infect host species. This means that only the first generation hybrid needs to be created from the orcoid spores, leaving it free to deposit gene stealer genetic material into any other species of the patriarch's choosing, be it other orcs, humans, Tau, or Eldari. In fact, this appears to be the case during the events of the novel Redemption Corps, when an armed uprising occurs upon the Adeptus Mechanicus forge world of Ilium. When the forces of the Astra Militarum engage the insurgent forces in order to quash this rebellion, they discover that the cultists are aided by orcs which display an unusually high level of discipline. As the conflict grows more intense, massive gene stealer hybrids that are clad in heavy environmental suits that disguise their appearance also join the fray. It's later revealed that these particular orcs had managed to bypass the world's defenses entirely by infecting agricultural supplies with reproductive spores, and by utilizing their unstable yet highly effective teleportation technology. Countless numbers of these orc hybrids, with several of them appearing highly similar to pure strain gene stealers, save for green skin and pronounced orcish tusks, are discovered by the Redemption Corps Stormtrooper squad within the remains of a space hulk that had crash landed upon a neighboring world within the Caligari Cradle, Ilium's planetary system. The orc hybrids and their accompanying brood boys were in fact attempting to spread throughout the system and beyond. It's also noted that orc hybrids are apparently exceptionally rare, as many members of the Redemption Corps held the firm belief that the existence of such hybrids should not be biologically possible. Although the squad's accompanying ecclesiarchal priest, Pontiff Preed, offers his own insight into the matter. Unfortunately not, my son. Why? We've known for a long time that gene stealer races use human hosts to pass on genetic material, why not other races? Orcs are among the most widespread races in the galaxy. Interestingly, all generations of orc hybrids also retain a telepathic link to communicate with other members of the brood. This is either due to being an unforeseen side effect of the orc's own communal psychic fields, or perhaps it is an adaptation for the Patriarch to override the effects of the Wa. But this mix of psionic fields between the Gene Stealers and the Orcs does not amalgamate perfectly, as the cross-species infection between Gene Stealers, Orcs, and humans within this particular system-wide cult eventually resulted in anarchic and disordered behavior within the human members of the cult. The Orcs themselves, however, would continue to be driven by their natural compulsion for conquest and battle, with their brute force being tempered by the cold, logical efficiency of the Gene Stealers. In fact, the Redemption Corps commanding officer, Major Mortensen, remarks that the combination of such traits means that these particular Orc hybrids had in fact obtained the best characteristics of both species. Regardless of the hosts chosen by the Gene Stealers, their hybrid offspring are a cancerous growth within whichever society they choose to infect, be it human, Eldari, Tau, Orc, or any other race susceptible to infestation. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.